And we are locked and loaded, ready to go. He's here. Steve Kerr is brought to you by Xfinity at home or on the go. You'll get the fastest internet to all your devices. And presented by Great Clips in sports, success is about team effort. And the same is true for your hair. Great Clips, it's going to be great. And so is our conversation because it always is. We welcome in the coach, Steve Kerr. Hey, coach, how you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? We're we're doing good, but I'm sure you feel it. It looked like it was, you know, that way on your face in the uh, in, in the the press conference last night. That was a little bit of a deflating performance, and I think that people are are looking at the inconsistency of the performances and and wondering why. Why why do you feel like this team kind of kind of looks a little bit different each time we see it? Well, I think uh, it's kind of the nature of where the group is, you know, we're, um, we're mixing uh, a lot of uh, younger players with older players. Um, you know, the, uh, the older guys are still playing at a really high level. Um, but you know, m maybe not quite as capable as they were five years ago of kind of willing us to a win on a night like last night where shots aren't going in. And, um, you know, the young guys are still learning, um, how to, how to win a game like that, how to compete, how to rev up uh, the defense, you know, without fouling, uh, how to uh, just kind of manufacture a win on a night when things aren't going your way. So I think the bottom line is our, our team is good enough to beat anybody and anybody can beat us too. I mean, it's, it, it's also, it's kind of the nature of the league right now. I mean, I, I just think the league is more stacked than it's ever been. There's more good teams than I've ever seen. So from one night to the next, it's it's really difficult. Yeah, it's challenging. And you look at last night, and you roll out your starting five that look to be the five that is the most reliable and the best, and you come out and have a really kind of dreadful opening to the ball game. What did you look at in the opening four to six minutes that that really troubled you in, in the fact that you guys fell behind by so much so early? Well, I thought New York set the tone defensively right away with their physicality, and they kind of knocked us off of our uh, lanes, and and um, they clogged the paint, and um, you know they 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 let us know you know they were going to be there um, all night in those first five minutes, and so we didn't really get any clean looks. We we had three turnovers, I think, um, trying to force the issue a little bit, but it was the exact opposite of our game in New York a couple of weeks ago when we got off to the 14, nothing start and controlled the game from there. I thought that that game was really won by New York in the first quarter and uh, give them credit. They were, they were fantastic. Steve Memphis in town tomorrow night. Uh, we, we saw a report of questionable for Draymond green. What, what can you tell us about his status? Well, he was uh, he was a little banged up last night. Uh, his back was bothering him a little bit, and um, so he was getting some treatment at halftime. Um, I think he's feeling a lot better today. I saw him at practice, uh, so we'll put we'll mark him as questionable. But um, you know, he's played a lot of minutes lately, and the, the 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 back kept him out of the game in Dallas last week. So we're just trying to to stay ahead of it and not uh, you know not allow this to become a problem. But I'll just lean on on Rick and the the training staff, and they'll they'll figure it out. Does playing him less at center help to lessen the burden on his back, or is the back not at all related to the position that he plays when he's out there? I don't think it's related, really. Um, you know, when we do put him at the four with Trace at the five, it's, re it's really more to lighten the uh, the emotional burden of having to carry the, the defense. It's kind of nice for Draymond to have a shot blocker behind him. You know, he loves playing center field, loves trying to muck things up for, for the offense and, and uh, you know, helping all over the map. Um when he's doing that as a five, occasionally it leaves the rim unprotected and he can get frustrated uh, when that happens. But with Trace back there, it lets Draymond play a little different role and, and take some of the uh, the rim protection burden off of him. Coach Steve Kerr with us, as always, weekly here. With it and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Coach, with all the lineups that you've played with throughout the year, do you feel like you're still tinkering and searching a bit? Or... Do you, do you have the group in mind that you want to go with the rest of the way? No, I, I feel good about where we are right now. I like the starting lineup. I know last night it wasn't great, but it's been really good for for a long stretch here. And uh, so I have total faith in the in that starting group. And then 
you know, it's so great to have Chris Paul back. He's he's an amazing player, and to have him and Clay, you know, anchoring that that second unit, um, I think we've got a, a really good foundation. You know, to have um, forty eight minutes of really good good basketball. The, the 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 tough part for us as a staff is just figuring out who's going to close games because we don't we don't have a definite five and it's going to be night to night who's playing well. And, and, you know, at times as a, as a coach, that's a difficult position to be in because sometimes a lot of people are playing well, or sometimes nobody's playing well. And and so you're going to, you're going to have to make some guesses and, you know, you'd much rather be in a situation like we were five years ago where you just, you know, who you're finishing five are if, if you're healthy and you just put those guys out there every night, regardless. Pods with a quiet night, didn't score in 25 minutes. Are you seeing him hit a bit of a rookie wall? And if so, how can you find ways to get him back to being more impactful, especially in the offensive end? Yeah, he had a tough night, uh, but that's um, you know to be expected, especially as a rookie. And as, as you mentioned, down the stretch of the season, I mean, he's played a lot of minutes this year. Uh, but he still plays with a lot of energy. Um, I think the biggest thing is just... Uh, continuing to show him tape of, you know, things he can improve upon and uh, remind him of, uh, you know, the details that are really important for him. But uh, I'm not worried about him at all. He's, he's a really good young player and, and plays with a lot of, a lot of energy and force. And he's, he's been a big help for us this year. Coach, this one might be, uh, might, might be tough for, for, for you to give a, a, a real true, honest answer, but uh, your team is filled with guys who have such resumes. And so to be battling it out for play in positioning, I got to wonder if there's motivational issues for them. And Draymond Green seemed to speak to that recently, um, you know, kind of having a hard time getting up for battling for the nine and the 10 seed. Is, is that an issue for you guys? I don't think so. You know, Draymond hasn't said that to me. I, I, I just think that, you know, my guess is that after a decade of this, um, you know, playing into June, so many playoff games, um, there's there's just fatigue involved at times, and and I think that's probably what Draymond was referring to. I can tell you this: if you know, if we're, if we're in the play-in um, situation, um, and we've got to we've got to win a game or two games, we will be incredibly motivated and. If we uh, if if we if we end up in that spot, I will remind the guys. Miami made the finals uh, from that spot a year ago. The Lakers made the conference finals from that spot. So we we have everything in front of us. We have our goals in front of us. And and even though it's been an uneven season and you know we're, we're a lot of ups and downs, I will believe until till the season is 100% finished, I will believe in our ability to, to beat anybody. And as long as we have that, we got a shot. How do you get that level of, of consistency back to where it was even a couple of weeks ago when you went on that run, when you won 13 to 17? It feels of late it's been one step forward, one step back, and not being able to, to play at that consistent level. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's uh, always... Uh, mistakes that you see on film um that you can correct um there's always uh you know th- things that that play uh, teams are learning as they go through the season um all of that stuff matters um but with that said you know we are a team that's really doesn't have a a, a great margin for error and so uh um, while i said you know we're we're capable of beating anybody um, and I believe that anybody's capable of coming in and beating us. And because that most of the games are going to be really close, I think it's probably true. We've played more clutch games than any team in the league this year. That's going to continue. And some nights it's just as simple as, you know, making shots versus, um, you know, the other, the other team not making them or, or vice versa. And so we got to just try to take care of all the margins, everything that we can handle ourselves, we got to handle. And then we just, we got to perform. We got to we got to put the ball in the hole. Coach, will you take us through uh, the sideline process of replay? And and you've been very outspoken in not loving it in a lot of situations. Uh, but I'll spotlight an example last night where it looked like Trace Jackson Davis got called for a foul where there was actually zero contact, and, and, and there was no there was no challenge. What 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 was the process there for you on the sideline? 
So we have a monitor behind the bench, and we have two coaches, uh, Seth Cooper and, and Jacob Rubin, who are monitoring uh, the monitor. So <laughs> they uh, <laughs> they look at the replay, and they and 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 I turn around and I I you know I I give them um, you know they they give me the uh, the thumb up or the thumb down. The problem is the monitor doesn't always have a good view. And, uh, so sometimes they'll just, you know, they'll give me the thumbs down because they don't have a, a good view. That's what happened last night. Um, they didn't have a good view. We only had at the time, I think we only had, uh, two timeouts left and, um, I did not, or it might've been three, but I did not want to risk it on a play that they don't see. And, um, uh, you know, in, in a situation where um, we feel it's likely to be um, not to be overturned. Now, after the fact, I did see the replay after the game from a different angle that our guys didn't have, and it was clear that Trace didn't touch him. So, yeah, we'd like to have that one back, but, you know, you, you have a process, you follow it, and, and you always have to factor in your, your timeout situation and uh, and the challenge situation itself because – if you lose it and you don't have one at the end and something happens and you're not able to challenge a play, then, you know, then you, then you kind of rue that one as well. Yeah. And you kind of rue the system in general, Steve. I know you and I are kind of in lockstep on the system because you get the one challenge. And yet later in the game, you had the GP two flagrant that's automatically reviewed to see if it's a flagrant. So that's not a challenge. And then you determine that because he landed underneath the shooter, that's now a flagrant. And yet, you can't challenge that in any sort of way. Is that kind of leading to additional frustration about this overall challenge system? Personally, I just I, I think the the flow of the game is much more important than uh, this um, I- impossible quest to get everything right. You know, there, there's so much unintended consequence of replay, um, and, and but one consequence that we clearly have felt over the years is just these stoppages in play that are terrible for everybody. Uh, the Laker game on Sunday was just insane. Now that was more because of the shot clock, but what, what fed into that was the multiple challenges just before that. But you know, that what, what I don't like with, with replay is that there are times where the, the, the game is taken out of the officials hands and for, a good example is is what happened Sunday against the Lakers. You know, Wiggs has inside position. Lakers kind of go over his back, knock it out of bounds. It's our ball. You know, the re- a good ref doesn't call a foul and just gives gives possession to the team that had you know that had inside position. That's exactly what the ref did. I thought that was the right call. But if you really want to go to the replay and microscopic, you know, camera angle and see that the ball actually hit Wiggins fingernail potentially on the way out, but you can't quite tell. Um, are, then And then you overturn it. Well, then I'm going to say, well, he actually got fouled. Like, so, you know, what, but you can't go back and call the foul. Right. And so you, you just get into these situations where it's like all these unintended consequences. You take the, take the, the matter out of a good official's hands who can ref, Based on what what's the right outcome, and uh, and then all of a sudden the the crowd is just sitting there. You know the, the the momentum is gone from the game, and the viewing experience is bad. So, in my mind, uh, I would eliminate if I were you know in charge of everything, which I'm not. I would eliminate all replay other than buzzer beaters. Just did 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 a guy get a shot off at the end of the game and at the end of every quarter, and that's it. Steve Kerr with us, Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. This is kind of a fun one, Coach. Uh, LeBron James on, uh, on the Mind the Game podcast recently said that in his lifetime of watching basketball, Allen Iverson and Steph Curry are the two most influential players. What's your reaction to that? I think that's uh, really, really accurate. Um, I, and I would agree without really giving it a ton of thought. Um because the way everybody handles the ball these days is a direct result of what Iverson did, you know, and then the purists can argue that it's a carry or whatever, but, you know, he literally created a move that every player in the league now is using, which is kind of the, the, the crossover, you know, the semi carry 
in one direction, the crossover the other. <laughs> the entire league uses it, and that that came from d- directly from him. And then what Steph has done is he's just made it normal to to shoot a million threes and to shoot thirty two footers, and and you know <laughs> nobody else did that before him. Yeah, I agree with LeBron. It's so fun to watch. I was telling Mark that I referee a lot of youth basketball, CYO, and all these kids now are trying to go behind the back and hoisting 25-footers because your guy has made that uh, de rigueur, has made it it very normal. And, Steve, I want to highlight Clay Thompson last night and just get your thoughts on the transition he's made to the bench. A season-high eight assists for Clay in a game where he's starting to look really, really comfortable Coming off the bench, how impressed are you by how he's assimilated to that new role? Clay's been great, and and you know the best part for me as his coach is just seeing him really comfortable and at peace with his role now. And I think he was fighting that a little bit early in the season. He wanted so desperately to be the same Clay from five years ago, and and he just couldn't get past the injuries and and what the injuries did to his career and to him and it was bothering him and he was trying too hard out there on the floor. And I think, um, he, over the all-star break, he really got his thoughts together, um, realized that maybe, you know, coming off the bench could be a good thing and he's embraced it. And he has been fantastic, not only his play, but, um, his attitude, his approach, his leadership, uh, Clay has been great and it's been really fun to see Coach, what about this? It was on January 5th that Shams had a story that Jonathan Kaminga had lost faith in your ability to develop him as a young player. Last week, uh, pretty much about two-plus months later, he said he wants to be a warrior for the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Take, take us through what happened. <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, J.K. came to this team um, – while you know all of his uh, counterparts around the league who were drafted, you know near him, they all went to lottery teams and immediately got thirty minutes a game. And he came to a team that had ch- championship aspirations and, in fact, won the championship. You know his rookie year, and so it's been a difficult road for him. And I have coached him hard, and and I have held him accountable for you know some of the the youthful mistakes he's made. Uh, but you know, I think we've we've really found common ground. I think in a in in a weird way, maybe it was good, you know, for him for that to, story to come out because it forced us to really have in depth conversations about expectations. And you know, I, I definitely gave him more of an opportunity that he seized, and I think he's really come into his own and it's it's great to see because he's a really really good young guy and uh handles himself well and uh, and he's earned everything he's gotten and by and large he's kind of become the two ostensibly on your team behind Steph in many ways and one player that fans continue to voice frustration over is andrew wiggins 24 minutes last night didn't seem to have a huge impact on the offensive end what can you do and what are the conversations like in terms of trying to get andrew more forceful and more consistent here down the stretch. Yeah, we want Andrew to be uh, more aggressive. He, he had a great game in L.A. on Sunday. Um, I think the the more aggressive he is looking for his shot, the better. There are times with our team where he gets lost in the in the shuffle a little bit. You know, we run our offense through Steph and Draymond, obviously. Chris Paul comes onto the floor, then he's going to have the ball in his hands. And, you know, Clay's going to get a lot of shots up and, I think sometimes Andrew gets lost and, and he's not the kind of guy to demand the ball, you know, demand shots. Um, so I think I've got to do a better job of keeping him engaged and, and, and really getting him in positions to, to attack and to be successful. Coach, you guys scoreboard watching? Of course, every night. All right, so uh, what, what, where, where's your mind on that front right now? Like, what's because you, you know you guys had said uh, and shared with the public uh, a few weeks ago that a stated goal was the six seed. Um, yeah. yeah. What What about now? Has that evolved at all? Well, it's it's uh, it's definitely going going to be more difficult um, than you know than I would have anticipated I, I thought we were in a really good place and I, I think Steph's injury knocked us off course a little bit um, and you know now we're on the outside looking in on on this on the race for six 
but we don't really control, you know, anything other than ourselves. And so the only thing we can do is, uh, you know, get better, keep, keep plugging away and just keep pushing forward and end up with the best possible seed, whatever that is. And, and, uh, as I, as I just said, you know, Miami and the Lakers, great examples last year coming out of the play in and, and making great playoff runs. So, we, I know we can do this, but we, we've just got to keep plugging away. Yeah, Dallas uh, leading the Spurs right now by six, early first. We're all Team Popovich over here, suddenly rooting for uh, <laughs> for San Antonio. Uh, March Madness, Steve, it's a big week, and I know you remember your days at Arizona. How many brackets will you fill out, and how far do you have your Wildcats advancing in this year's tournament? Um, I'll just do one bracket. We we have a, uh, a team bracket every year uh, that David Fatoki in our front office runs, and uh, I'll I'll get on in on that, and I will pick Arizona to win the whole thing because you know that's what you do. Well, except for <laughs> in the in the in the coaching community, I thought for sure you'd be rooting for a guy like Dan Monson after what's taken place so at, at Long Beach State. Uh, fired and then ends up in the tournament. So I thought you'd say one and done for the Cats. No, no, I, I rooted hard for him to win the conference tournament, and and that happened. So my rooting is done. All yeah, right, sorry. Yeah, and, and the draw is what the draw yeah, is. Yeah. You got to go that's, with those Cats. <laughs> that's the end of that. That's, All right. That's right. All right. Well, Coach, good luck. Good luck. We'll be watching obviously tomorrow night against uh, Memphis. Thank you as always. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Okay. You too. There it is. Steve Kerr right here on Withered and Dibs.